to only 24 words, but in these 24 words, the concept of truth, fairness and justice, fraternity and the good of the community find mentioned. While the four-way test we have started out an ethical code meant for employees at a business, there is no denying that it can have universal application and importance due to its concern for the efforts and values. The four-way test will be my entry point to the topic I wish to talk about today. Law and society and the idea that justice prevails. Dear friends, I want to make it very clear this speech is little not that much interesting when compared to the other contemporary issues. It is little uh, technical and uh, what you say about the legal concepts. But however, I will try to, I try my best to simplify the, the concept. Whatever from society takes, be it a tribal society or an authoritarian regime or a democratically elected government, there is a need to ensure that it has some order, some set of rules for living. Law is one of many mechanisms that exist to ensure such an order. It is essentially a tool of social control. It is different from other forms of social control as it has the sanction of the state behind it. What this means is that when law is breached, the power of the state operates on the one who breaches it. The operation of state power on an individual or entity is one of the defining characters of the law. Under the spectra of law, society orders itself. As Aristotle said, I quote, Man is the best of all animals when he has reached his full development. So, he is worst of all when he diverts from law and morals. What is our understanding of law? Law is that which regulates human behavior. Law is also an instrument for achieving social change. It does not operate in a vacuum. For a society to develop and prosper, we need rule of law. Where the rule of law is absent, there is anarchy. We as a society decided at the time of our independence what the structure, form and contents of our law should be. The Constitution of India gives the laws of India a certain direction and purpose. It is the document that breathes life into the law. And unlike in an authoritarian regime, this is a document that was drafted and adopted by the people's representatives. It is a document that sets out of a vision for India, its laws and the structure of the society and the state. It also follows space for debate and dialogue between people and the state regarding this vision. It is provides means to resolve these disputes, be through approaching the judicial, exercising the right to vote, or through protests. The Constitution of India is therefore an organic document, one that was not imposed upon a populace, but was created by the populace, both at the time of the adoption of the Constitution and through the changing interpretation of the document over the years. The people had a major role to play. It can safely be said that the Constitution has constantly evolved through the active participation of people of this country. This is how it should be. Society is constantly evolving and progressing. Our values and what we consider important is it is to the contrary. Now, protests are viewed as a hindrance by the rest. People are no longer motivated by ideas of equality, fraternity, and justice for all. They are, instead of, moved to by sectarian and communal concerns, rather than sharing in a broader spirit of belonging to one large community of Indians. At the same time, 
there has been a shift from the political and the social society of Bengal to the judicial sphere. In some such cases, judicial action might be necessary and desirable. However, in other world, political cases such as a course of action is wholly inappropriate. Moving social and political actions into judicial sphere limits the scope and ambit of the dispute. It forces political grievances to be squeezed into the language of law and fit into specific legal categories. It reduces the possibility of political action for resolution as the executive is quick to raise its hand as soon as the judiciary gets involved. Further, through its very nature, it hinders the organic growth of civil political actions and movements. In the sterile environment of the court, the emotive contents of the issues raised is lost. The power of the people is ultimately lost. This is one of the reasons that I believe that the court need, courts need to be more circumspect about the kinds of matters they choose to take up and decide. All these are the symptoms of the deep malaise in our society, the malaise of apathy. When a person is apathetic to the concern of others, then we will reach a point where society breaks down. We will no longer from a part of a community, but will just be individuals living in close proximity and nothing more. Such a state of affairs cannot be allowed to thrive. I therefore request all of you to rose yourselves from your apathy, exercise your voice, exercise your right to vote, be political and socially aware, and reach out to one another. Raise concerns, support and participate in political and social movements that seeks to address the injustice around you. Be active in bringing judicial concerns before the court. Only then can we, as a society, ensure that justice ultimately prevails. I sincerely thank the organizers of the Rotary Institute 2022. I particularly thank all the office brothers who have meticulously organized this event. My presence is mainly due to the perseverance of Mr. Kishore Chalkoni. I wish all success for this conference. Thank you, 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 you,